audio on. I sound like a computer. Okay. Okay, give us a second here and we're about to get started. Video on, banner off, and I think we're good to go. Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, previously, we were looking at modeling COVID using a variety of different models. I don't know why I said it that way. That sounds like I'm trying to be exciting, which I am definitely not. Now, one of the problems we ran into last time is um, we had to go through multiple steps in order to get our fitting data. Uh, we had to, you know, um, do the L squares estimate, uh, create a function out of it, and then create a list that gave us the um, the estimates from that data. And uh, if we wanted to, we should also we could have also gotten residuals and the total error sum. So let's try to write a function that does all that. Um, at once instead of uh, instead of having to do it in multiple steps. Now I'm going to use the same technique I use in JavaScript, which is I'm going to pass an object uh, to the uh, an object meaning an, an associative array essentially uh, to the function, and it's going to return an associative array as well. That's a little bit more complicated, but it means the function is more flexible in case you want to uh, in case I want to add things to it later on. Um, so let's call this linear regression takes, I'm going to call it an object, even though I'll say associative array, actually, associative array with the following keys, x, list of x vowels, y, the list of y vowels, and returns, and we can have it return more or take more later, potentially even with options. And in theory, we could take linear regression and change it to arbitrary regression. But let's, go, let's not go too crazy with it right now. Let's just stick with linear regression for right now. OK. And it returns um, an object whose keys are an associative array. All right, it is Pomodoro time. It's the first one, so we're going to skip it. Uh, it returns an associative array whose keys are so if I could spell, these keys are f, which is the function, uh, the best fit function, a linear function, just in case we didn't make that clear. Um, y, oh, let's see, do we call it um, y estimate, est y, a list of estimated y values based on f. So this is how good we do our estimation. Um, I don't know if I want to return the residuals themselves, uh, but I do definitely want to return the error of the residuals um, because that tells me how close my fit was. So error is going to equal um, sum of square. Oh, actually, hang on. Let's do this. Uh, I think it's mean square error. Um, hang on. Mean square root error. Sum of squares of differences, square rooted, all divided by size of x. In other words, the sort of mean, um, the sort of a way of finding out what the average difference is from the value uh, between the values of the actual function and the actual data and the estimating function. But then, some of the absolute value of the differences, because that is actually even more, technically it's more accurate. Uh, actually, hang on. Um, divided by size of x. So in other words, um, the average distance without having to square and square root. Okay, so now we will say linear regression and by the way, whether or not this is even going to work, like in even a minimal sense, can I even pass objects, associative arrays as objects? This is just, we're really getting started here. In other words, I have no idea if this is going to work. Um, but I do know it's going to involve block. And I do know it's going to take, 
we want to call it obj input object. Um, let's just call it obj. It might be a little bit more. Okay, so it's equal to a block, and now here are the variables that are going to be private to the block. Uh, Mathematica has this concept too. Uh, we, I guess, it's going to be. Yeah, let's not worry about it for right now. Okay. So the linear regression of the object is going to have obj x and ob y. Now, I'm not even sure if this is going to work. So let's just do this, by the way. Work here starts 22 April 22, evening, because it is about 6 p.m. here, and that's evening-ish. Okay, so the first thing is, can we even pass objects like this? And now I want to see if this thing has a print function. Hello. Cool, it does. So we can start very basically and say print obj end function. That should okay. And now the question is, can we actually pass it an object? An anonymous array. Let's actually not do that. So let's say temp eighteen oh three x equals one two three, and of course by equals I mean colon, and y equals three two one. Contact. And then what happens if we say linear regression of t eighteen oh three? Very much doubt this is going to work. But I'm going to restart. Um, because we don't need the other functions that we had, I'm just going to start r maxima empty. Let's see if this even compile. Let's see if this even lets me do this. No, it does not. Um, I guess inside a block you need commas. You can't have um, you can't have semicolons. So let's see if this compiles. Okay. And then let's see what this does. See if this even works. And I think it will actually, um, because I this is I've done this before. So yes, you can create an associative array. And now the question is, will this actually do what I want it to do? Um, and it is a function, so I do need to make it as a function call. Not super exciting because. Um, I guess I guess I'd sort of have that coming. Let's see if we can print do this. Yeah. Okay. So something is wrong here. So we give it an obj. We print obj x. But, and this should be. Okay, maybe that was the problem there. Um, yep. So I fixed it, but I didn't fix it in the file. All right, let's do this and let's let's do the whole thing over again, please. Let's just go from here all the way to here and see what magic occurs. Hey, hey, hey! There it is. So it looks like we can pass in objects. I'm going to guess we can return objects, but now the question is, can we anonymously declare this object without having to uh, specify a specific, um, a speci without having to give it a name? Can we actually have an anonymous associative array? Um, and let's go over here to the wonderful manual and see if we can do that. And I, is this matrix this is? Uh, no, I think this is actually going to be lists. So we're going to do data types and structures, lists. Uh, there's two types of lists, uh, and it's going to talk about that in just a minute here. Um, unless I'm thinking of arrays. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Nested arrays do not have to be okay. Blah, 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 blah. Um, three array-like constructs. So this was the one we're using. Oh, hello. Hello, Wordwin. I did not see you there until just now. Um, 
Isn't it? It's six o'clock in the evening, six o seven p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. It is past midnight in. Uh, uh, I was going to say in, in England, but actually, I think England they observe British summer time, so it's actually um, one o seven there. Um, so it's twelve o seven a.m. Universal Coordinated Time, which uh, I guess somebody's. I guess Western Europe observes it now because they're on summer time as well, but. But uh, babble, babble. Let me fix my chat settings here. Um, so do I want? I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get rid of these. There we go. You had some funky icons next to your name. Um, okay. So no, it's nowhere near my bedtime. My bedtime is 7 p.m. So you know, not 6 p.m. Mr. Smartass Wordy Win, Word Win. <laughs> Um, sorry, I almost missed you there, but good to see you. Okay. Um, so we're trying to find an anonymous way to declare an array like this. Without giving it a name, we want an array that has uh, not integers. Well, because we can do this. This we, this we can do. This we already have. So if I give the second element of that is two, that's easy. But I don't think we can do necessarily... Um, arrays with, you know, object names anonymously. But let's see if we can. Um, uh, uh, let's see. So feel free to make comments or say something that's more interesting than what I'm doing, which is anything. Wait. Array. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I'm pretty sure that's not going to do what I want, but let's try it. Ooh. First argument must be a symbol or a list. So hang on. Ow. Just wounded myself. My, my, minorly, but still. Um... Oh, these are dimensioned arrays, so naturally that's not a good idea. Um, memoizing function. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Ooh. So array make. I still don't think this is going to work. Um, list array, and yes, I could Google for this. Make array, fix number 10. Okay, now let's see if we can make an array uh, that is anonymous. No, it does not look like we can. Rearray, rem array, removes arrays, okay. Subvar. Um, okay. Uh, translate fast arrays, structures. Oh, so maybe I'm looking for structures. Um, maybe I'm not looking for structures. Structures are clearly what, what would be objects here. Um, but let's see. All right, let's see if we can do this. Anonymous array in maximum. This is going to give me anonymous arrays that are um, that's PDF so let's not do that now I'm pretty sure I can get anonymous arrays that are just like numerical arrays let's see though if we can figure this out this is actually lisp motherfucker Wow, I don't even know what the hell it is. I don't even want to know. Um, let's see. Okay. And I guess I don't need the in anymore. We're going to say anonymous array maxima. Okay. This is 
just kind of fucking weird now. Pretty feet, pretty feet, queen of the Rosary Academy, queen of. What the fuck? Where? What bizarreness have I landed in? Okay, maybe we better go back to here. Um. So this, so T eighteen oh three. Nope, not like that. This. If I do array info T eighteen oh three, it will tell me. It's a hashed array. Now that that's not all the information on the array because I can also say array values. I think because those that doesn't give me the actual value. Nope, not what I wanted. Um. Okay, and I think I have this written down. So let's let's find it. Um, array info and list array, just to make things confusing. It's list array. Okay. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. So the question is, can I actually use that um, to create an anonymous array? Um, I wonder if there's like a input form or a raw or something. Uh, input form. Um, okay, so let's even find an input form for an array, and then maybe that'll be the, by definition, the input, the anonymous form. Input form. Okay. As a Fortran 9.0 program, I mean, I just got to do that just for the hell of it. Mm, no. Wait. Do I need to take in a little bit of a... I think I need to in include something to get this to work. And this is actually not what I'm looking for, so maybe... Um, oh. Okay. Um, is there a dump, maybe? Nope. Not an input form, not a, let's see, introduction, bug to help, command line, data types and structures, evaluation, simplification. Um, the double, two single quote marks, modifies. Mm, getting close. Ev, no. Uh, eval, ev flag, mm. ev fun, interval, no, inf val, no val, and none of these are going to be the actual, um, actually, hang on, how do I save, um, do I have a save function? Ooh, what does save do? Maybe that'll... Um, save. Stores the items. Okay. Let's read the rest of this. Save file name, name one, etc., etc. Stores the current values. Okay, well, let's do that. Save temp. Save me! And we'll do that for 218.03. Alright, and now we can go over here, or we can't, and say what is save me. Motherfucker. Okay, that's not going to work really well. That is cool, though. Um, so if I could somehow get this, um, and I don't want to, I don't want to be doing that, but if I could, this is how I could save it. Uh, but that is really, really ugly. Uh, let's see. Save. Uh, collapse. 
Mainvar. Introduction to plotting. No, I don't want that. Um, is there the word raw format? Nope. Raw. No. Okay. Um, I'm guessing a structure. Well, let's take a quick look at what a structure is. Maybe that's what I need. So let's look at structures here. Not infrastructure, but data types and structures. Structures. Um, which actually might be what we want here. Okay. Deft. Oh, you have to define a structure. Oh, this is ugly. Hmm. I think the problem though is you have to you have to declare a structure before you can use it. Um I don't think you can have a raw structure. Oh, is that all they have about structures? Really? Okay, screw it. Uh one day we will find a way to create a structure. Uh, full form? Sorry, I'm, I'm now stuck on this. Full. Oh, what does full do? Oh, hang on. What is full listify? Um, okay, no. Mm, unthread deep depth tree form? What is, okay, now I, I don't even really want to know what this is. Not tree fake, but tree fail. Uh, what is tree reduce? That's probably not also what I don't want. Yeah. Okay. So I might revisit the idea of having uh, like this sort of thing here. Uh, Pomodoro time, and I am going to take it this time back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. Okay, so let's for right now not worry about how to create anonymous uh, associative arrays or whether we want to use structures. For right now, we're just going to say, uh, just assume that it's okay to use, we could even one day create a function that could 
create a uh, associative array out of a list. So let's not worry about that. Okay. Um, so now, if we're going to do this for real, now one thing here is I'm pretty sure that I do not need to make the variables a and b local. In fact, I think I'm going to try it without doing that. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to do the actual estimation. So that's going to be L squares. Oh, hang on. Yeah, hang on. Uh, so I've got the x y values and the y values. Okay, hang on. So we have this. Um, we have the x values and the y values. And then I think I want to do a transpose of that. No. What do I want? Let's take a look at what I did before with days and... Okay. Oh, oh, right, right. I need to do... I need to do matrix of this. I'm just double checking. Transpose of that. I think that's it. Yep. Uh, so it's transpose matrix of. And we will call that um, now we can actually give these things some real names here. Um, so the transpose of the matrix is, I guess that is actually going to be the matrix that we need, so we'll call it mat, and that's a local variable. So mat is equal to the transpose of the matrix of object X, object Y. Now, just to make sure we got that, we're going to very slowly, step by step, this is a comma, um, print the matrix, and let's just do this again. Make sure we actually got what we need. No, because transpose, transpose is when a transvestite uh, poses. It's very exciting, uh, but it's not very mathematical, because they are fairly uh, artistic. There we go. So we got that part going. And then... See, I'm tempted just to say from here we could uh, just use the L squares estimate here, but let's let's go ahead and use a... You know, we could combine these later at some point, but... L squares estimates of mat x, y, y equals a times x plus b. And now I'm pretty sure that in, in this expression, x, y, a, and b are bound variables. In other words, even if they were assigned globally, the global values wouldn't apply here because they're inside of this L squares estimate. Uh, however, I'm going to test that now. So first, let's make sure this is working. Um, I think I meant to say estimate. No, I didn't mean estimates, didn't I? Okay. Um, not cool. Although I'm beginning to wonder now if it's, um, Hmm. This should work. Okay. What are we getting back from this? L squares estimates. Okay. I mean, technically, that is correct. Um, it's just not evaluated. <laughs> Okay. There really should be a nice way of putting this into like a flat form. Um, okay, hang on. So, I mean, this should be the same as doing this. I mean, except it's not a matrix. Oh, actually, this is might fail because the thing here is not a matrix. Yep, 
do I need to declare this to be a matrix? I mean, mm, or am I am I going in one level too deep here? Oh, yeah. Um, I did not load the formulas here, but that also means I didn't get the uh, the L squares package. So let me go ahead and redo this. Not redo this, but let me go ahead and reload this with these formulas, which we're going to want to use anyway at some point, by the way. So we might as well do this, do this. So we're going to do Maxima 2, which loads in the... Um, all the libraries. Also a bunch of data we don't need. Um, and let's see what this does. There we go. So that worked really nicely. And now my claim is that even if I sign A and B and X and Y, this will still work because these variables are bound inside of this expression. They don't exist outside this expression. Um, yeah. So let's say A equals 3, B equals 5. Let's do our linear regression. No! I was wrong. So let's go ahead and make these and what the hell, x and y too, even though again, they really should be local. Um, now this should, now this should work. Yeah. Even though a and b have values, it doesn't matter because they're now local to this, this block. Okay. So now, so that's the estimate. Um, oh, you know what? I think I could just do this as ret for return value and then say return matrix equals this. I mean, we might as well, you know, even though we're not going to necessarily use these values in, as the return, uh, we might as well, because uh, then I can also just say return ret. And now, if this works, by the way, I do need to uh, save it to GitHub. Um... Oh, shit. Hang on. Yeah, I still need to do X, A, B, X, and Y because those are being used. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't say ret. Yeah, because those are being used as symbols. Those aren't being used the same way. Okay, cool. And so tell me what the map is of this thing. Yeah. Tell me what the est is of this thing. Awesome. And now... We can say the function that you want is oops is uh, set equal to uh, subst the um, in this expression and these a x and b are coming from right over here. Okay, um, and now we could say uh, show me the function. Show me the money. No, show me the function. There's more to do here, but... Hmm... Okay... Infinite regression. No. Didn't say anything about infinite regression. In definition of... Okay... Oh, wait, 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 what? Um... Mm. Have I done something screwy here? Linear regression of um, T1803. Okay, so it does not like that at all. Found bar bad argument F. Um, 
So I guess the issue here is I cannot define a function like this. Actually, this would be of x, but um, okay. Let's just let's just let's just chill. Let's just print this out. See what's going on. And just running this should print out. Okay, four minus x, which is the one I wanted. Um, and let me go ahead and save this to GitHub just because it's doing something at least. Okay. Off it goes. All right, so this is another little problem we're having here, which is we cannot return. So this function exists. And I guess... Okay. Let me see if I can do this. Um, print it as a pure function. Lambda x. Not doing what I need there. Okay. Uh, do I need to load lambda? I mean, this should be pretty solid here. Okay, well, you know, let's do this. Let's not, let's say f of x is equal to this, and then we're just going to, wait, nope, there we go, uh, maybe I just had the parentheses off by something, no, no. Okay, solid. So we now have f. Cool, we have defined f. Now, of course, we don't really want to define it globally. Um, and now, just to make sure I didn't screw anything up, ret of f of x this should not work. Um, this might not even allow me to define it. Uh, cool, I think. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, declare argument must be a symbol found f. Okay, so no. Uh, but let me let me see if we can fix that. Okay. So we do want f to be our little temporary variable that we're using here. Um... But now, can I say ret f is equal to f of x after I've defined it as a function? That doesn't look good. I don't like the way that did that, but let's see. Oh, okay. And what is the f of this? And what does that apply to the number 4? No, okay. I wonder. So this is the concept of can I return a pure function as an array object? If not, what I have here is actually not too bad. But let's see if I can do this. And actually we just need to do... Okay. <whistles> nice. So the thing that's being returned in the f coordinate is a function. Very, very nice. Okay. I guess the only thing that's going to bug me here is... And let me save this before I forget. Okay, so now could I have defined f as a lambda function? In other words, could I have just said this is lambda, x goes to this, 
and instead of saying f of x, just say f is equal to this. Um, does can that does not look correct. Holy crap! But it worked. Um, That does not look like the correct function, though. Um, hang on. Hmm. Okay, that we just probably need to fix. So let me go ahead and reload this to make sure that I haven't, or have, screwed things up the way I want. So now if I do this... What does this do? Lots of magic. Um, okay. So that worked. Uh, I wish I would kind of evaluate do a one level of evaluation there, but I guess this is correct. This is what we this is what we want. Uh, I guess the only question I had is why was this being weird if I run it again? Nope, it's still four minus x. Huh. Okay. Okay, let's just see if we can handle a little bit better than this, though. Set this equal to days. And set y equal to depth. And by the way, in case you're wondering, I am aware that I need to update my data because it is past six, it is past midnight Greenwich time. Okay, and now, let's see your linear regress T1803 now. Um... Yeah, that actually looks about right. All right, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. Okay. All right, now let's see if we can find the estimated y values. Uh, did I say y yes, or did I say the other thing? Est y. I think I should, it should be y est. So these are the y values based on the linear regression. And they should just be equal to make list. Um, 
let me uh, exactly the way I've done it before. Um, ret f applied to the function i. Hang on. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, i goes from one to length of. It doesn't really matter, but um, let's see. I mean, any of these will work. Objects. Yes, looks like yesterday. Yesterday. Love was a freaking game to play. Alright. I probably need to suppress that output. Okay. And now, what are the estimates? These are going to be way off, obviously. Okay. These are going to be fairly accurate for the recent last few days, but way off. Okay, but that's correct. Okay. And then we need the... I guess we'll give the actual errors, which is... Um, L squares MSC, but the, the um, uh, or okay, so these are the residuals. I mean, that's mm, that's technically correct, but I mean, okay. The problem is there's really there's nothing really deep about this now because uh, from the data which was retmat uh, x y y equals ret f of x. I guess the only cool thing here would be if we use this parameter here, it might be interesting. Um, let's go ahead and oh come on. Give me some freaking... All oh right, hang on. Oh, actually, I do need a comma there. Okay. So now this should give me... the residual list. Okay. So now, again, these should be smaller towards the end. Uh, yeah, because it's not a really good linear fit at all. Um, okay, and the nice thing about having a residuals list is now we can make it easier to compute. Um, the absolute mean which is um, ret residuals of i, where i goes from 1 to length obj x. And that is It's the absolute value of those. And okay. Divided by length objects. And it's kind of making me think that I maybe want to use more temporary variables here. That's ugly. Okay. So the sum of the absolute values of the residuals um, divided by the number of residuals. So let's Wow, 
Whoa. Oh, some have the wrong number of arguments? Okay, hang on. Some... Oh, for some, these have to be three separate things instead of a list. So it's I, because it's basically this. There. Okay. What are the maps? Okay. That seems... Mm, actually, that doesn't seem too high. Hang on. Yeah, an average error of about 24,000. And then... And then finally, the MSQE, the, the average error as computed from the squares. Uh, this is not too much harder. Uh, so here what's going to be... Residuals of i... Nope. The ith element squared... My goes from one to length. Object x... So we take that sum, that's the sum of the sum of the squares of the errors, we're going to square root the sum, and then we're going to divide by x. So this number should be similar to, but not identical to, um, the, the MABs, the, the absolute value difference. Uh, if it's too far off, something's wrong, but it's not going to be exactly the same, because these are different concepts. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, and mean square rooted error, I think. I decided to call it. And that does not look correct. Okay. Those are the residuals. Um, that's what happens if I square them. I'll call this T1850. Uh, let's make sure I got it. T1850. Yep. And then I want the sum of T1850i, I goes from 1 to length T1850. Now that seems like a big number. Uh, that's the sum of the squares of the errors. If we square root that... Huh. Maybe that is correct. Okay, did not expect it to be that... Um, that different. And I'm still a little bit suspicious. Because uh, we're taking the sum of the squares. Uh, I think there's something wrong here. Hang on. Oh yeah, I want the average sum of the squares error square rooted. I think I am dividing by too big of a number because I mean the square the, the the square root of the sum is not the sum of the square roots, but but still. So I think maybe I want um I mean one way to fix this would be to make the square root go around the whole thing. The other way... Well, okay, hang on. Let me have to try something here real quick. If I put square root 91, am I getting closer to the... And what was the MABS there? Yeah. So what am I doing wrong here? I'm taking the squares, summing them up, Um, 
dividing by n. So the average, I'm confusing two very similar quantities here, but they're, they're very different in terms of values. Um, the sum of the, the square differences, if you add them up and divide by n, okay, yes, that's, that's what I'm doing wrong. This, um, this square root should actually extend over here. Okay. Wow, I need to really suppress the output of that, but so far, pretty interesting. Uh, what is the MABS here? And the MSQE. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, as we would expect, that is a pretty terrible uh, linear regression. Let me go ahead and save this to GitHub. And so now what we can start doing here is, this is for the world, we could also do it for the... Um, We could also do it for the United States, or not. Um, and for the Y values, we could do deaths US, linear regression T1803. Um, For the U.S., it looks like we have um, mm, could have sworn that was the same value I got for the world, unless I did USA the first time. Okay, suspicious. Stand by. Yeah, that's not looking too good. Um, so what if I do something really ridiculous? Um, was I doing equals? I was doing equals, that's why. Um, colon days. Colon deaths US now. Yeah, that's better. Um, this is not a great fit. We would expect that to be the case. The mean absolute error in this is um, six thousand two hundred ten. The mean square rooted error should be you know similar about eight thousand fifty. So not a, not a great not a great linear fit. Um, which we could, um, I guess we could actually plot that. Uh, we could plot discrete days. Um, wait, yeah, that's fine. Uh, days, deaths, US. I think this should work. Yep. And then also, discrete days um, linear regression t1803 uh, y est um, okay linear regret do I need one more set of we need that. There we go. And as you can see, the linear regression isn't very good because uh, it really isn't a linear function. Um, the exponential might work. Uh, it's it's not a great fit either, but that would that would be another way of doing it. Um, but now what we want to look at is what if we were to just do the linear fit on okay um, okay okay let's re 
to there. And then linear regression. There is a method to this madness, maybe. Um, let's call it this. Um, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I need a semicolon there. Some days. Okay. But now the question is, what if we were to take, instead of trying to make it fit the entire function, um, just trying to make it fit the last few days. Um, for example, the last 30 days in both cases. That's a much smaller error there. Uh, what if we went to 31? bigger. So what if we went now to 29? We're not going to do all of them, don't worry. This is just a way of uh, 3, 4, 7, 4. It's getting smaller. I think we're going to hit like a minimum. I guess we are going to do them all. But this is something we're actually would be doing 3, 2, 4, 5. That's even smaller. Um, now, of course, once we get down to two points, it'll be zero because any two points make a line. 3, 0, 17. We're going to find a place where this gets worse, but That's a lot better. I'm, so I'm hoping there's a time we're going to find it gets worse. Uh, 24. It's getting better. 23. Oh, hopefully this doesn't become one of those things that the fewer days I take the 2173. I'll do one more like this. Okay, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two, we will find a solution to this. And we are almost back. And we're back. All right, I'm hoping this doesn't become one of those things where um, it just gets smaller and smaller. I'm, I'm hoping to find a, uh, okay, and these are averages, so they're not just getting smaller because we're using fewer numbers. Okay. Obviously, we would want to do this in a loop if we were doing this for real. Not looking good.
Not looking good at all. Yep, just getting smaller and smaller every time. Uh huh. Okay, 1231 now, so it looks like maybe it's leveling out here and this might be larger. Nope. Nope. And I know once we get down to two, obviously, it's just two points obviously make a line. Not good. This looks like it's going to go pretty bad. Because these numbers just keep getting lower and lower. Even though, in theory... Hey, hey there we go. Alright. So, for ten days... Um, we could say for the last ten days we have a really good uh, sort of... Uh, um, sort of a... Uh, a really good linear fit, at least compared to um, the ones we have for nine. Let's see what eight is. I'm, I'm become obsessed now. I don't think we're going to see it better at eight. Yeah. So sort of the ten days is the best we're going to get. Um, and let's see what that actually is then. So linear regression. T1803. Um, and now let's get some array info on this sucker. Ooh. It is, but it's not. Uh, okay. So, what are the Y ESPs? Oh, shit. That is actually not correct. Because I think I assumed I was taking the Y estimates on I, where I is 1, to, but what I actually wanted to do, of course, is take them on uh, obj of X ith element, where the ith element goes from 1 to length of the object. Um, glad I caught that. And here... That's fine, because the residuals, the residuals are, that's fine, and that's fine. So the only thing I had wrong there, the Y estimates aren't from 1 to the length, they're from whatever the X values are. Uh, actually, does that break my, um, do I use yes again here? I do not. So even with yes wrong, the other stuff is fine. So let's do this real quick. Let's not do that. And if this works, we're going to go ahead and add it to the list of, of functions. Um, so let's take a quick look at T1803. Um, okay, good. This is an array. And then... Nope. Is it list array? Yeah, list array. Just to make life confusing. Okay, good. So this is for the last 10 days. So I can now do linear regression on this. Um, and those are the estimates. Let's take a look at the residuals. They should be pretty small. Yeah. Residuals are pretty small. So what is the function that is doing a great job of predicting? Um, so the function that's doing a really great job of predicting the last 10 days is a very nearly an increase of 2693.5 uh, deaths per day. Um, there's other stuff we could do here which would say, what if we were to use this methodology in the past, we would probably see it would fail. Um, but this this is how we're doing, uh, this is how it looks today. And I'm kind of curious. Um, 
I'm actually I'm not that curious. Mm, I could do the same thing for the world, but let's at the moment do something else here. So I like this function. I'm going to go ahead and save this to GitHub. Because I'm paranoid. Um, oh. Have I not changed anything? No, I need to save it, that's why. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to do the same thing for the exponential and log linear uh, interp interpretation, interpolations, func function fitting. And let's go ahead and get this. Actually, I think a very easy way to do that is just do this. Okay, hang on. This, we now need to just move this over here. Okay, and so now we can do um, log linear regression, which is going to be almost the same, actually. Um, Got to be a little tiny bit careful because it's not exactly the same. But let's copy this function and then tweak it. Uh, log linear regression, blah, same matrix, and here we want to fit log y equals ax plus b, not a big deal. Uh, the function here is going to be uh, exponential of ax plus b. Wait. There we go. Um, make this return f. Yeah, these are the little, these are the y estimates based on um, the return function. The residuals are going to be uh, let's see based on the return function. The sum here is going to be uh, I think the rest of this is correct. I'm I'm very suspicious of this, so let's let's uh let's rock and roll this sucker. I don't even know if it's going to I don't even know it's going to compile. Did I put it in under functions by mistake? Uh no I didn't. Okay, good. Uh so log linear regression T1803. First of all, let's take a look at T1803. Um I think we're going to go ahead and restore uh T1803 to be the whole data not just this little chunk of data. Uh, and let's go ahead and go crazy and make it death's world. Okay. So log linear regression T1803. <whistles> Took a little bit. Okay, that's not cool. Log linear regression. Okay, well, let's see what the y-s's are. And let's see what the residuals are. Gonna be pretty big at first, I think. Um. All right, hang on. The y estimate. Now let me plot that real quick. It's going to be discrete days. This guy. Okay. Um. And let's go ahead and plot that against. Damn it. I was hoping to do a little clever thing with a return there, but no. Discrete days deaths world. Okay, there, there, there. Okay, I mean, 
not exact, but I mean, you know, it, it doesn't look totally off. And now I bet you anything if we do this with a Y logarithmic axis, axis, yeah, that's exactly what I expected to see. Okay. So, so far, so good. So what was the problem we were having is, um, so it's working, I mean, So why the hell, what the hell is this? Why isn't this becoming floatified? XT. Oh, really? No, that's... XT is obviously the exponent function, but this is... All right, hang on. All right, so... So this is the function. Let me take the log of this function, which is just going to be this float of this. So this is actually a little bit ugly. Okay. So apparently if you do float, it only floats the first point, which is not good, actually. Um, but it's tolerable, because this is basically the exponent of this function here. The residuals are computing nicely. The, um, let's see, the mean error based on the absolute value is, man, I wish I'd done a float there. And if we use the mean square root of the error, it's a lot bigger, actually. Um... Okay, so if you accept this function, um, oh, of x, um, let's see. you have a doubling rate god damn it and something like okay eight days yikes really i don't think that's quite right um no it might be actually yeah, because if this is the, um, yeah, actually, so a doubling rate of about eight days. So now let's see why we really do not want to use stuff like this. Um, this is ugly. But so now let's plot this. X goes from one to 91. That's the, that's what we would that's the current rate um, that's so far let's even do this as log y okay so that's that's how this function is going right now but what if what if we do like out to nine it's about a quarter let's go to two quarters why is this a bad idea well because if we accept this then by the time we get around to um, another 91 days, we're going to have close to a a million people dead. Or at least 500, 500 million close to a billion people dead. And if we take this out for another quarter, it's going to become impossible. We're going to see that we have more people dead, over a trillion people dead, but there aren't that many people in the world uh, to kill. So, okay, so we now have this one as well. Let's go ahead and put that one into our little repertoire. Um, and then the final one's a little bit more difficult because you have to be a little bit careful how you set your I initial values. And this is going to be true exponential regression. 
uh, not log linear, but the actual best fit exponential function, which is different. So we're going to do this. We're going to do save it to git real quick. And then we're just going to basically copy the same thing, and it's going to be a little bit different because we're going to need to specify initial values. Um, X, I'll call it X, X pro progression. Uh, same matrix. Now here's where it gets weird. Um, you would think that this is the same, but it's not. Um, X equals B. And now here is where it... We need initial conditions, uh, because otherwise it's going to not... Even with initial conditions, it might not do what we want. Okay. And then... Let's see, lambda x, y equals x, find a and b. This is still the correct way of estimating. Uh, f is still the return function. Okay, I get the feeling this is incorrect, but let's find out. Um, I think I'm being a little bit too glib now. Now, we definitely get errors here just because it doesn't... Uh, but it, it seems to work, actually. Um, and this is the best fit exponential function. Right here... Um, and I think this is the doubling period that's about nine days. Yeah, 9.69 days. Um, Okay, so let's see what the y estimate is here. The y estimates, rather. Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
and we are almost back and we're back okay so now we can plot this um, by itself first and then we can plot it against Let's see, discrete days, deaths, world. Wait. Okay, and there you can see the, um, the difference between the actual number, the blue line. Uh, wait, hang on. Did I plot the, uh, the wrong one? Oops. And the the red line is the actual data, uh, whereas the blue line is the estimated data. You can see it's way off over here, but since we're actually looking at the um, the total distant difference, uh, this is actually closer uh, than if we were if we look at the log distance. This was a bad idea on my part. Plot two D. Uh, with the logarithm, it looks you know it looks like there's a big gap here, but that's okay because the numbers count more when you're up in this area. So the uh, the, the blue line actually does do a better job of, of estimating the actual virus uh, than than the um, than the law. And so now I think what I said we could do, and maybe this one we're gonna let's see. We could plot. Let's go ahead and move this into the. Um, because this is working into the formulas. And let me go ahead and push this to get. Okay. <sighs> okay. So I've gone ahead and pushed that to get. So now we have sort of our three ways of um, of looking at this at, at modeling data, um, and what we could do here is let's see, let's go ahead and do this for the United States real quick. Um, And this should be a really, um, it's actually just US for us. And then we could do, yeah, I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. Plot 2D. It's okay when you do it from here, because this is just, this is a, a file, but it's ugly from the command line. Uh, discrete days, deaths, US. So let's make sure this one works first. Um, This is the actual number of oops. Actual number of deaths in the United States plotted against Really? Hang on. Oh. Right. This closes off this. This closes off the, the list of plots of which there's only one right now. Okay. And that's the uh, the list there. Let's maybe make this log wide to make it easier to look at. It's not that much easier to look at, but okay. And now the the sort of cool part discrete days T A T don't we can call that something else obviously. I don't know if I want to do linear regression. Let's do um Let's do log linear regression of T1803. So, oops, it's a function. And I want to see the y estimate values. Um,
That's not good at all. So why isn't that working? Do I have the world data in there for some reason, somehow? Um... I did re... Yeah, I made a mistake. I forgot to actually set these. So that's what I meant to do is this. Mm hmm? Encountered log zero. Yep, you sure did. Um... All right, let's do it without the log Y for right now. We need to fix that by treating zeros as ones or so. We need to just... Oh, shit. Um... Yeah, I can't do that, can I? Um... So I need to select the period of time where the U.S. has had more than... Alright, hang on. Um... Okay, this is a little bit tricky. Um, not impossible but tricky sublist um of days where um deaths of us on day x exceeds zero. And I think that should start at like 11 and then go on from there or something. 39 actually. Okay. So this will be the x values. And then this will just be sublist of uh, deaths of US where um, So in this case, x will be, oh, x is greater than zero. That probably should not have been that difficult. Okay. Um, so these are both going to be, let's see. Now, hopefully they're the same length. If they're not, uh, I screwed something up. 53, 53. Okay, solid. Now we should be able to do this. Um... days oh yeah shit hang on I guess we're gonna be really really good about this this should be t1803 X because we can change that to be whatever we want and t1803 y and once again Once again, I, I wonder if my T1803 is not being what it's supposed to be. Okay, that's fine. Okay. And then my... Um, OK. 
Okay. I am suspicious. I'm hoping I have not declared. Yikes. Hang on. Okay. We have a problem. Ret was definitely supposed to be a block limited variable. So what the freak happened? Um maybe This is not cool. So f should not be defined because it was a private variable. Let's see what f is. Okay, that's good. The only thing I can think of is when I did this uh, variable privatization, it doesn't work for uh, arrays. So I'm actually defining ret in the main space, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. So X, Y, and Z. None of these should be A, B, X, Y, Z, F, A, B, X, Y, F. But res. Wait. What the hell? Oh, ret, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so maybe I did, am I just calling it the wrong name? No, it's Rhett. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the block syntax and see how we make uh, private arrays. I don't even know if block is really a function. I mean, it kind of is. Um, to be local, already bound, so it could be unbound. Bound. Um... If there's no need, okay, don't know. Okay. Um. Okay. So the problem here is I want a, a private variable that is an array, um, not just a private variable that's a regular private variable. So how do I do that? And I'm tempted to put, I'm tempted to do something like this, but that's clearly nonsensical. Uh, okay, well, time to go to our good friend Google. Although it wasn't that helpful last time. Maxima block local array. Aha, local array within a block. Your mama. Um... See, this is what I like. I'd like to apologize for Maxima's confusing policies, creating arrays, function arguments, and properties versus values, all of which, <laughs> in which make it hard to predict what's going to happen. Um, block A1. Okay. Um, so presumably this will mean, and let's go ahead and kill Rhett. Rhett, I loved you. Okay. So now, 
obviously I'll need to fix the other ones if this works. Okay. Okay. So now I should be able to do exp regression T1803. Only symbols can be bound. Your mama. Your mama's a symbol. I'll bound your mama. All right, what the hell is it doing here? Block. Um. Oh. This is actually part of the declaration. Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. Um, and we're back. Okay, so this maybe suggests... Let's see. See if there's a better way to do this. Eh, maybe there isn't. Okay. Arrays within... <coughs> this does not look good. Um, do I just need local? Let's try it and find out. So here... The local keyword is apparently different than the uh, than putting it inside of a block, and it's going to be called a function, even though it's not really a function. Um, okay, I get the feeling this is not going to do what I want, but hey, eh, baby, it's a wide world. Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world. Okay. Maybe we're going to just start over again. And I'll go ahead and define T1803 to be correct. And let's just make sure that... Um, ret isn't defined at all. Good. 
And now, let's do this, see if that even works. Okay. What are the Y values? Probably could have put that into float. Um, and now is ret. Yep, it is. Not good. Okay. So what if... Okay, maybe we don't make it a block variable, we just make it a local variable. Pretty much grasping at straws here, by the way. Um, oh, actually, hang on. Oh, hang on. That's good. That's not good. Okay. <sighs> um, can I get even ret mabs or something? Oh, not ret mabs, sorry. Can I get mabs out of this? Uh, maybe this was the wrong function to test with, huh? Let's do this with one that actually... Let's go ahead and do this with the linear one, which is probably the easiest one to, to mess with. Um... Okay, hopefully that's enough of a warning. Alright, now let's see if we can do this with linear regression. Very, very simple. Um, ret y values, none. Good. Linear regression. Wait. Does there already a linear regression here? That's going to be obnoxious. Ooh. Bummer. So I kind of... So this gives me a lot of... Uh, a lot more. Okay. Alright, let's add that in there too. That I fucked this up. Fun, fun doing it anyway. All right. I get the weird feeling that this has not been defined correctly. Oh, okay. Uh, give me the Y values. And uh, new. Give me the residuals. Nope. Totally F that up. So let's at least go back to where it was working, kind of. Except I might have broken it in the process of trying not to break it. And... Let's go ahead and do this again. Um, linear regress me. Uh, what is the function? Uh, did x. Okay. What is... So this does set the global ret, which is bad, but that that's okay, I 
think, because we're not going to end up using it like that. Um, let's see if this does what I want. It probably won't. Um... Hmm. Okay. Let's just try it with this guy. Um. All right. Actually, I'm kind of confused here because this should just be, and this should just be, and all right. That should also be okay. So, why is this having trouble? Why you give me trouble? Apply wrong number of indices. Apparently, he's having trouble with one of these things, but that clearly exists. Is there an error message in all that? That looks like a perfectly valid thing to want to plot. Um, so why are you giving me trouble? Log linear regression. Yes, ta, ta, ta. All right. Well, let's plot you one at a time, and let's see you screw that up. So let's do this. This is the pretty much the data itself, actually. Good. And now, you think you're funny? Well, let's see if you laugh now. Why am I doing a German accent? Oh, shit, 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 shit. That's why. Needed a comma there. Uh, okay, let's try this now. Okay, so those are the... Um, yeah, there's something wrong with the log linear regression. Estimates. I mean, I guess we could do exponential reg regression to check this, but that just does. There's something just wrong there. Okay, let's do this, but I I think something has gone terribly wrong. Actually, with the exception of the log linear one, which has gone crazy for some reason, these look okay. Well, maybe, maybe if we plotted these with the log y. Now, of course, there are negative numbers here, so log y is not going to be able to plot the whole thing, but it, I think it does an okay job of figuring out 
uh, it won't just plot the numbers that it came. Oh, you know what? Actually, because the log linear has to estimate um, the, the log, it's actually probably a reasonable estimate. I mean, it's not a reasonable estimate, but it's probably the correct estimate there. So here is the... Um, so here are the various estimates for growth. And I think this is this is US, right? Yeah, this is US. So um So the exponential regression for the US is this and every time. Um, that's a doubling time. Okay, hang on. That's not good. Oh, that's really not good. I mean, if that's true and predictive, which of course it's not, but let's just do um, let's just do this. So, yeah, and of course the exponential has to be close to the actual values, not close to the log values. Um, so this would actually be better to look at without a log y. Uh, because we're looking at raw numbers to see how close it is. And the log sort of distracts from that. All right. Well, that is that is a not a good looking function there. And that is a um, shit. Still shit. Um. So if you use the uh, the exponential best fit growth, uh, we're screwed. We're going to have double, uh, constantly have doubling deaths every six days. Um, yeah, that's that's not good. Hmm. Now we could actually plot this using log y because we're only looking at this function. Yeah, that's I, well. Luckily, these things, as I said, are not predictive. In other words, six months from now we will have. Um, I think that's more people than exist in the United States. Yeah, 400 million uh, of a population of about 350 million. So again, that's not the way to go. The linear uh, model looks much much less bad. Um, but also does a terrible job of predicting stuff. Um, okay, and now the other thing I was going to say is we could, we're not going to because I'm running out of time. I'm not running out of time. I just don't want to do this anymore. Um, the other thing we could look at is um, limiting the time axis. So instead of looking from day one, uh, looking for shorter periods of times and, and measuring the error and seeing what the best, you know, and the best exponential fit would be if we looked at n days back. Best linear would be m days, and best log linear would be whatever number of days. However, having, wow, another two-hour stream, that is not fucking bad for me. I mean, it's bad for you, because you have to suffer through it, but uh, not bad for me. All right, thank you for watching, and goodbye for now. I probably will not be back today, but I might be back tomorrow.